All right, so let's talk about camp shoes. Um, this is probably going to be uh, kind of rudimentary for those who already know a lot or have some experience in this area. But for, for those that don't, what are camp shoes? So a lot of hikers carry an extra pair of shoes with them. Uh, in addition to the shoes they're walking on and they're not trail shoes. These are are different So the, what is the purpose of, of camp shoes? Well, I think there's Kind of like two and a half main reasons So one is when you get to camp you you can take off your sweaty or wet socks and take off your hot shoes and Let them dry out and let your feet air out But you don't want to walk around barefoot so you wear something so these could be pretty minimal you just want to protect your feet but the other reason for camp shoes is for times you don't want to get your shoes into the water or the mud and so you wear camp shoes instead now often we find that just getting your shoes wet is the right way to go but there are times maybe where you want to take off your shoes and socks wade across a, a small stream and put them back on but you don't want to wade across barefoot so then you need camp shoes so in this case those camp shoes need to have enough good grip to not be slippy on the rocks and provide some protection for your feet again so the the other half reason for using camp shoes is when you get into the end of town and you don't want to walk around town in your trail shoes and put extra miles on them for no reason you just wear your camp shoes or again if they're wet and you want to just dry them out you're back at a hostel you can wear camp shoes so so one of the issues of uh trying to figure out what kind of camp shoes to wear is determining the weight when you look on Amazon, sometimes you see sandals and you go like, oh, that's five and a half ounces. But you don't know is that it's five and a half ounces each. So a pair is ten and a half ounces and that's not light. I mean, it's kind of light, but it's not really super light. So there are ultralight sandals out there, but they typically have compromises. And um, so we'll go over what some of those are. Um, the first one is the one called the Mayfly. You can see that on Garage Grown Gear. Garage Grown Gear. And um, now the Mayfly is made from the same material that they make those portable, cheap, stick in the yard signs. It's a corrugated plastic. I I didn't buy these to try them out because I just figured that no way would, they, would those work for any kind of stream crossing or anything else that. Uh, other than just walking around camp and so for me I needed I wanted sandals that did more than just protect my feet from thorns when I walk around camp and those really looked uncomfortable so I didn't even try those but they're there one of the other uh, common options are Crocs and I don't know much about Crocs but I ended up ordering some different pairs to try and uh, they are very lightweight for what they are. They're very protective. They really tick all the boxes. I'd say the one downside, ignoring style, the one downside of a croc is they're bulky, right? And people typically clip them to the back or are often called the front of their backpack. Um, and that works. I, I per personally uh, can't have things that flop around on the back of me it drives me nuts but um i i can use a carabiner attach them to the backpack and then stick them in some paracord to make them not swing around and that works but they are bulky so i kept thinking like is there a better option out there and so i started ordering different ones and trying out different sandals and after a while i realized I had quite a few different sandals I've tried and, um, and are any of them perfect? No. So they all have positive and negatives. So we'll go over what I've got, how much they weigh, and what I see as the positives and negatives of the different types of sandals. And also kind of go into, if you do get Crocs, some thoughts on what kind of Crocs. It turns out there's a lot of different kinds. And uh, so we'll get into that.
All right, this is a uh, selection of camp shoes um, or potentials. Some just provide uh, some basically contrasting information. And some I actually purchased with the idea of using and not sure that I actually will, but these are what they are. So the first are these um, warrior shoes that I got from Garage Grown Gear. And uh, I'll put a link to that. And they're pretty expensive uh, for what they are. The positive is uh, they are very light. Um, the total of the Warrior shoes is 6.7 ounces. Uh, the negatives are that um, I, I just wore them for 10 minutes around the house and they really were uncomfortable. They, um, you could feel these attachment uh, blocks um, under the shoe. I've only worn them 10, 10 minutes and um, they've sat here for, for some months while I debated looking at other shoes. But while I while they sat here, you can see that they've curled up now. And um, yeah, so that's pretty disappointing. I, I would not recommend these shoes at all. So um, yeah, the Warrior shoes from Garage Grown Gear. I then tried these. Uh, these are shoes from Zero and um, they are comfortable. It's a little bit of a pain to get in and out um, and adjust the straps and get them just right. But once you adjust them, it's not bad. Um, they are pretty light, so uh, and they're comfortable. I like, I did like these shoes, and I've used them a few times and, and actually put them on my backpack. They are relatively flat, so they're not so bulky. I just used a carabiner and put them in there. Um, they are 10.7 ounces, so yeah, not bad, but not great. So what about shoes like uh, just these standard, uh, well, we used to call them flip-flops. Uh, hey, that's actually pretty good, 5.9 ounces. So you can see a significant savings by just going to a pair of these really thin flip-flops, right? So here's some uh, 9.5 ounces. These are your standard reef flip-flops. I've worn these around for a while. 8.8 um, .8 ounces, so that's better. And I know that you can get like the really cheap uh, flip-flops like you can probably find at Walmart and they're even, they're even lighter. These are Adidas. These are my wife's, 8.3. So actually surprisingly, they look like they wouldn't be, but they are pretty light. Anyways, these. 10.7, so still in the light, but not really light category. Um, all right, so then what about these? These are water socks um, with a grippy bottom. Very comfortable, very nice. 13.6, hmm, still kind of heavy. Don't think I'd want to take those. So what about these? These are Fit Kicks. Um, Easy slip on, relatively grippy bottom. Um, I don't know about style, but yeah. 8.9 ounces, or, or no, no, I just went to nine. So nine ounces, and uh, yeah, so that's a contender. Okay, so let's look at the different Crocs. So these are one style of Crocs where you just slip on. These are the iconic Crocs Comfort. I don't know if that's actually what they're called, but um, yeah, 12 ounces. Hmm, that's so not not really light. I think Crocs feel light because they're bulkier, and so for the same weight, you expect them to be heavier, and you're, they're actually light for what they are. But again, these are nine ounces. These are 12 ounces. It's not a huge difference. So what about going to Crocs like these? Um, these are a common style. 11.6, okay. And these are ones with the adjustable straps on the back. 13.6, so that, that one actually adds a little bit extra weight. So um, yeah, so my, my take on wearing these are that the these straps don't really do much for me. I mean, they, they seem too loose for my size and I can't adjust them. So you might as well just either cut them off or just leave them off. 
These actually work better because I can adjust them to be tighter. And, um, and these actually work really good too. So of the Crocs, um, I really, this would probably be the one pair I'm not a real big fan of, uh, but it would be either these or these. Um, and, but again, I could say wait by going with the Fit Kicks or just a pair of standard Walmart flip-flops. So that's kind of where we're at now. Um, these are contenders. Um, not really sure what I'll actually take on trail. I, um, my, my thinking is I might just take one of the Crocs and one of the Fit Kicks and try them both and see what I think. That would be the advantage of having a support band is I could just leave one pair in the van and, and over some time compare the different shoes and see what I think. So anyways, that's my shoe comparison. I'm not trying to give you a de definitive answer on what shoes to wear or what not to wear, but just kind of give you some ideas of fitment and weight so you can do your own comparisons and basically hike your own hike. Thanks. Bye. Mm -hmm.